Kevin Smith has entered Kevin. the studio. What's up, Kevin? Man. That video, we're talking about the Kennedy assassination and the woman who, there's a, a, a she was in the book depository. Jason, take and, a and seat, filming the, up, Jason? the way that Kennedy was going. She was from Oswald's point of view, but she didn't know how to use a video camera. I forget her name, but you can see, I've seen the, the footage. I've never seen so, this footage, so there's alternate angle to the... Oh, yeah, but you don't see the assassination because this dumb woman didn't, didn't know what she was doing. pointed the camera at the floor. Wait, it wait, 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 wait. rifle barrel wait, view. Wait, this has to be online. i got to see this. Yeah, what, it is. And, when did this come out? Because Oh, it's seen... been out for the entire time. When did you lose so much weight? What oh, yeah. Oh, thanks very much. Jim and AIDS. Me He's been oh working at fucking AIDS. Well, I don't want to come in anymore. I don't want to stand next to you. Like <laughs> number 10. 25 pounds, right, Jimmy? <laughs> About, yeah, 25. Can, can, we, but can we see this video? I've never seen it before. Yeah, maybe we have to have... Uh, but of course, we'll, you're out of your mind. Breaking news is Jimmy's thin. Uh, oh no, we've been talking about that. I, I imagine. Yeah, okay. This. Every pound we've been. I've like, never Holy seen fuck. the video. I've never even heard of it. Yeah, it's uh, wait. So she's filming him uh, before they make the I, left turn, and then all of a sudden the camera goes down because she's stopped. yeah. She fucks up the camera, but oh, she would so have. It's the, not. She doesn't drop it because there's a gunshot. No, I, I think she's. I think she Did panicked. You find that real fast. Yeah, look for JFK assassination from book depository. She's like, oh, he's so handsome, and just, just, you, she just didn't know what she was doing. Yeah, she didn't sum me. What? Oh, it's it's silent, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've seen the video. Uh, yeah, I saw I saw it uh, a while ago, like no, years and years ago. No kidding. What a dummy. Restroom? Yes, please. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the way. Uh, yeah, it's kind of hard. Uh, go to the yeah, end of this. Yeah, go, have the intern show you where the end of that is. hallway and make a right. Yeah, and then just keep heading down the yeah, hall. Yeah, will find it. And he walked on down the hall. Who was it, Bill Hicks, who had the, the bit about, like, you know, when you're, uh, I think when you're elected president, yeah, they bring yeah. you into a room, sit you down, and show you a, mm. a, the Kennedy assassination from an alternate yeah. angle. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. Like, any mind. questions? Yeah. Right. Yeah. They got it. We yeah. understand who's in charge here now. We were just talking about technology, and obviously, you know, if that went down today, we'd have so many angles of the Kennedy assassination. We'd know, we would pretty much know exactly what happened. I mean, day. look how quick, quickly they pieced Boston together. That's what yeah. was it, Lord yeah. and Taylor? security yeah, yeah. Yeah. footage between um, everybody what i have not followed since last night have they they revealed that they did arrest somebody no that was a mistake i think it was a mistake i don't know yeah, I, yeah. it's not necessarily a mistake i don't know if they want to like uh, give too much out because the, the cause police and fbi had said there isn't this? a suspect and then today they're saying well there might be right i think so. they're mm. They're, being, they're protecting their fucking... Yeah, they're keeping it uh, tight to that. Because if they needed the public's help, they would have fucking said, this is the guy for sure we're looking for. And they right. did not do that for whatever reason. They don't want to tip their hand, as I they say. Yeah, I think they... Uh, well, they keep saying that, like, we have pretty so, good footage of a guy coming yeah. in, putting a pressure cooker in a garbage can, and then walking away. Yeah. So, so at why that point, they, yeah. They, why wouldn't they show the public that? Because one person would know that person. Might not want to let guy, the guy that's know what that saying. everyone knows. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, they got... They're just not willing to give us now, uh, and so t and in today's news, the ricin thing is not related at all, right? No, I think that's just coinky dink. And then the Texas thing What's that was Texas? a fire at a fertilizer. It just place. blew up a fertilizer it that destroyed sixty five homes. Crazy! Like that. That you see the explosion? You I, see the video I, I yet? See, I watched. It. I didn't see the video of the explosion, but I saw the video of a guy who was talking about like a first responder. He was an EMT guy. Oh. He's like, there was a fire. We went over, and then the fire hit, and boom, guy. Oh, let, let us look like a nuke. Yeah, let us show you. We got to show you the video. Cool. It's I'm a, still waiting to see the Kennedy assassination from the alternate angle. We're looking for that too. But basically, it's a father is is filming the fire with her uh, with his it, it sounds like a daughter right just filming the fire and then oh here it is here here kev instead of explaining it yeah yeah so, somebody will uh, watch this send me that link please this thing is do you prefer it when people use their iphone length no. no. i don't scream about it just want to yeah turn your fucking phone or do you think like now we'll get used to this over the course of the next 10 years and be like this is all this is a i think i think there'll be a built-in app that just does it for yeah, you yeah i don't understand why it doesn't because do this is ridiculous That's world star hip-hop fucking view you, you, you know <laughs> Here, just show Kevin this, and then we can move on with other stuff. So, so the, on that way. So the father's just uh, so they're just this. shooting it for the sake of shooting. Yeah, the daughter's yeah. in the car. It's like a cool moment they're having with each other. This is crazy. Watch this. It's a big fucking fire, but it's like nothing compared to the explosion that happens. You got to know you're too close. You should collapse. I would never think I was too close. Really? I mean, well, I no. I guess you wouldn't put together that fertilizer explodes. Oh, you okay? Yeah. You okay? Yes, I can't hear. Come here. I can't hear. Get out of here. Please get out of here. Oh, my God. Holy Please get out of here. Crap. Please get out of here. Oh, my God. Dad, please get out of here. I can't oh, hear. I can't hear. Oh, shit. I 
can't hear anything. Oh my god, I'm oh so my scared god. I'm gonna cry. Isn't that terrible? But, but dad, go, dad, go. But uh, yes. you gotta assume everyone's okay because the guy posted his video online. So oh, like, yeah. <laughs> that's what, how we figured it out earlier well, that's today. That's kind of the most gripping part of those oh. eyewitness videos now is just hearing people react. The Boston yes, the video reaction. with the guy just going, "Holy, <laughs> bro, yeah, yeah. Right. holy, bro. yeah." Yeah, the reaction to the shit is like what is crazy. Can you the show them the still from that video? Because uh, and then we can. But it's uh, like a bomb going on. Basically, literally. he's like, I think this is going to collapse soon. He's all like, he's in on it. I, I mean, this in is on what a fire the moment. Like. Yeah. But watch, hey, look darling. at the still. Look at the still that. Uh, that fucking thing is like you, a, it literally dropping a bomb out of a B 52. That's why the entire town is destroyed. <laughs> look at that. That's the uh, yeah. actual explosion. It was so intense it reached them. Yeah. In the car. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to figure out how far away they were. <laughs> a couple Probably. hundred yards. Yeah, our first think, guess yeah. was like eight miles. And eight we like, miles. No, we're fucking <laughs> idiots. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that far. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, right there. Look. Oh, they were showing it. Like a, yeah, yeah. Like a that's fucked up, man. That's fucked up. Apple stock tumbles below four hundred. Oh, that's fucking. We were talking about that today as well. I'm What's going crying. on? I think everyone's just catching up. Finally, they lost like twenty five bucks yesterday. I'm like just that. miserable. Crazy. Really. You know why? Because I invested. That's yeah. why I'm responsible. What, what do you get in at? Three ninety. Uh, mm. So what is it now? It's four hundred, but it went up to seven hundred. Oh, at one point. And I <laughs> held it. Ooh, it'll be a thousand. Uh, oh, fucking. Do you, you think it'll ever go back up? No. Not if. I, not if, to yes, As soon as I sell it. <laughs> <laughs> if I sell it, buy. I don't think it goes to seven hundred anytime soon. So no, what is the idea? You, you think like well? I think everyone just uh, like, every, we got this. Everyone's just started catching up. Right. That I Samsung uh, phone, the really. I, I'd go with the oh, Samsung. The Androids and whatnot. I got that the uh, Galaxy S3. I all Apple people caught up and were like, well, I've already got everything. I don't oh, need well. But I think you're right. It's like other people. I think everybody else, phones. they had such a lead on it. They everybody. were really the only game in town for quite a while. I mean, they had other ones that were like, well, this is your iPhone killer. We got it right here. Everyone like, was trying. Really? Are they lining up at stores fucking for hours on end to buy that piece of shit? Maybe I don't think so. I still no. like my iPhone, though. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. But uh, wow, man, that's a big jump, drop. Did yeah, you do it? What's going on in the world, man? Why? Uh, I don't know. It's a weird. Somebody on Twitter just hit me up this morning, going like, "I listen to your podcast, and all you do is talk about movies. Why don't you talk about current events? Because they're <laughs> fucking depressing." <laughs> yeah, yeah, no I, shit. You're so right. I'd man. rather just dwell on escapism and be like, "Hey, man, Batman," and, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and move the fuck. Yeah, on. I think yeah. you get. I think you get people a good release. I think that's what it's about, right? It's certainly you don't want to hear me talking about the I issues. I don't have any. Deep I love inside. when we push off to some silly, dumb, dopey thing. I think just to get what, away from this shit that's for a while. What people want. They're like just. Make me escape, particularly if you're listening to like morning radio and whatnot. You're listening to you guys. You don't want to sit there and be like, remind me how terrible shit how is. How shitty everything yeah, is. Yeah. Make me funny. laugh, bitches. Well, we're That's like, we're kind of yeah. It. We do, we so, do uh, delve into, uh, but then we're to. aware enough, you know, to try to push away from it and kind of goof on it. Yeah. So you did yeah. a cartoon, a Jay and Silent Bob super groovy cartoon movie. I'm always amazed at how it's hard to motivate me to do most things, and you are fucking <laughs> always you're on an a animal. project. I, it's I I'm, can't. I'm terrified of being irrelevant. So. So naturally, <laughs> I'm always trying to work. You guys got it easy because every day, you know, you wake up and people are going to be listening to you and whatnot. But like in my world, you wake up, you're like, I hope people are still interested today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, if you're making a movie once a year or once every two years, it's a lot of time for people to be like, well, while you're doing something else, I'm going to fuck off over right. here. Mm -hmm. So I like to kind of keep them intrigued, keep them interested. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is one of those things that came out of his sobriety. Homie here used to be all heroin and oxycontin out and shit. Nice. And now he's, uh, <laughs> as you can see, uh, he got mm. clean. I think it was like the second time. The first time he got clean, he was clean for what we thought was six years and turned out to be five. And he was lying for about a year of it or something. He'll be like, oh, was he lying? Mm. Were you a good liar? He was pretty good. We <laughs> all was believed good him. at it. Yeah. Even the dude was lying. Literally, I just, I got. I was getting high for so long, I like sort of forgot how. Like I thought I took my six-year cake. Like I was coming up on my six-year cake, but I was really coming up on my five-year cake. Got surgery, started doing painkillers, and I was like, "Well, I was taking them as prescribed." And then when I was even taking more than prescribed, I was like, "Well, I'm not really getting high because I'm not doing oxy's or heroin." Oh, uh, so it's not uh, really you know, getting so high. It right? sort of was just not, not so much me lying as much as being confused. On it, it, re it really was. The I truth clamped. confused me, so <laughs> I stopped <laughs> telling it. Well, no, that I'm saying in the beginning, and then when we really sat down and, and like really thought about the date, like what the birthday was, it was coming up on five years and blah blah blah. Um, so yeah, you, you, you've been 
that was the first time. But yeah, he, yeah. He, he's been to hell and back, and he looks way better than all of us. What the <laughs> fuck? Oh, stop. I saw that on Twitter. We <laughs> put, I put fuck, up a picture man? on Facebook of us yesterday, and somebody was like, how come he doesn't age? <laughs> you really don't and age. They said him, and I was like, what about me? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, you fucker. All right, so that was the first time. Then the second time? First time, and then uh, now he's on the second round and uh, of, of longevity and sobriety. And you're up to what? How many days? Uh, so I don't know. Like a thousand in like fifteen days. Oh man! So is that over three years or no? Yeah, it's, it's almost, almost three years. Three years. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I always sit there. I'm like three six. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> try to count math. it up. Right. I have. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's like a thousand fifteen. So almost three years. I'm coming up. Thousand ninety five. It's great. Three years. Look at you, man. Good little hunting and shit with the math. <laughs> just busting it. So he was in his early sobriety, like in the first two months of this thousand days run. Um, he was looking for something to stay busy. He was like, I need something to keep me busy. And so he's like, I want to do something in movies other than act. Like, what else is there to do? Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, there's a bunch of stuff that he could direct. He's like, I won't do that yet. Um, I said, what do you think about doing? He goes, produce. I want to be a producer like Scott Mosier. And I was like, do you know anything about producing? He's like, no. I was like, then you are a producer. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Um, so he was, I said, look, I'll give you some material. I gave him a script for this uh, comic book I'd written a while ago called Blunt Man and Chronic, because Jay and Silent Bob are superheroes. Yeah. I said, uh, everyone's superhero crazy now. Take this. Maybe turn it into a web uh, cartoon. And he went away with this dude, Steve Stark, who does our smart animations, takes our our audio makes cartoons oh, out right, of it. See, that's what we... Uh, you guys, I don't understand why you aren't doing it now. I don't... Yeah, we did an animation thing a few of them, but, really yeah. well, and then... I don't you know. You don't even... We, we had an animation now fest. Huh? where you just basically say on the show, hey, somebody make a cartoon, yeah. and they will send you a cartoon. Yeah, well, we got Coke Logic, yeah. who does that's an great. amazing job, but we want to kind of get more looks at our shit. We should just do it and fuck the animation festival. Angle. We had an animation festival. like It was a highbrow event for for once for us, because we're always down and dirty. Right. It was gr People loved it. They man. just took uh, segments of our show and animated it. And animated it on top of it. Right. We had a whole festival. We we uh, got a winner and all that shit. Yeah, it amazing. did really well. Now, why didn't you do it again? Well, because uh, we were caught up in actually doing it as an event again. Maybe we should just say fuck it and just get it online. As it a should thing. just be a show. Yeah. It should, yeah. it should, it's a no-brainer TV show. Because you never know what bit they're gonna. They in their minds they want you know they want to animate and then they have what they feel like what we look like in animation, right. which is always different. So you have like ten different like uh, Opie's, ten different Jimmys. And it's and just flattering to see somebody drawing you and taking your words sure. and somehow funny. making you funnier. It's you amazing. know, like you say funny stuff, but they animate it on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. They're even more clever based right. on the vision. Yeah, it looks hilarious. I love those. It's good stuff. But so that's we, what we, you guys are doing. We found a dude named Steve Stark years ago. It's going back about five years now that he had sent us a cartoon off of one of the Smodcasts. And we were like, oh, my God. And we had the same notion of, like, let's do this on TV. But that's, like, the old thinking. Mm -hmm. Like, yep. I need permission. Somebody give me money to do this. <laughs> yeah. And it was yeah. like Scott Mosier was like, what do you want? Do you want a TV show or do you just want cartoons about yourself? And I was like, I want cartoons about myself. <laughs> He's like, so let's pay for them. We'll just do them good here. You. So we started doing them. <laughs> that dude's been around for a while. So Muse was like, I want to do this thing. I said, team up with Stark. So they went off, and he came back like two months later with like about ten minutes. I actually, it's five. I just watched it the other day. It's five minutes of like what was going to be the first web cartoon of, of Blunt Man and Chronic, it mm. was called. And it was so good. Like they had done it. And like normally I'm there when he does uh, the performance and I'm, I'm directing and stuff, but he was doing his performance without me. It sounded mm. great. They put together something funny. It took the script and something that shouldn't make me laugh anymore because I wrote it years ago and I know this stuff inside and out made me laugh, nice. man. And I was like, this is viable, dude. Like never mind web cartoon. Like you could turn this into like a whole movie. And he was like, if we turn it into a movie, can we take it out like Red State? And mm. I was like, yeah, because I guess he was, he liked the Red State tour. He didn't go on it that much. But he liked the idea. That red state idea was amazing. It was fun. And so I that's what we're doing with this. Same thing. Awesome. But it's, what's smarter about this one? Like I love the red state tour, but red state was was figuring the tour was figuring out how to do it um, and make money off of it. Right. Like yeah. we paid off our bills and stuff. But the only way, at the end of the day, I was like, the the way we could have done better is if the movie wasn't as pricey. Right. It was a $4 million movie, which isn't that expensive. But if you're going to do this kind of touring thing and four-wall thing, right. you, don't, you, know, you don't have as much leeway or as much headroom. So with this flick, man, they went into production without thinking it as a movie. They were just kind of doing it as a web short. Once they were like, it's going to be a flick, they put it together and they had a budget. 
So I was like, what's the budget? And he was like, $69,000. Wow. And I said, why? And he goes, because 69 new. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, the budget's based on a fucking sex joke? <laughs> nice. Um, but they kept it to that. So the movie, the whole cartoon costs 69 Come on. grand. That's what I'm saying. Like, you guys are crazy not to be ma making yeah. some animation. So we take it now. Like, we put our tickets on sale for the tour a couple months back. Day one tickets go on sale. By the time day one of ticket sales are done, we're already in profit. It's wow. Follow me, by the way. Let me plug it. Csmod.com slash groovy movie. Because there's a whole bunch of venues you guys are doing all over the country. And uh, is, there's like a... a the really... one here in New York is the best buy. We're going to be here Tuesday doing the screen oh, at the Best Buy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'll Can we go? Can we yeah, go? Yeah, we'll give you guys tickets. I would love if to you, go I mean, to it's at night, and I know sometimes you guys Oh, no, away. I'll fucking stay up for that. Uh, is, is there a talk afterwards? We're doing always... the, the okay. movie first, and, and then afterwards we do our Jay and Silent Bob. Get Can I tell podcast. you, when you did that with Red State, you get to see this cool movie, and then next thing you know, the actors are on the stage. I was blown away. It was fun. We kept it going. And so. other people are starting to kind of like uh, follow your lead a little bit, right? Yeah, there are some cats going out there, I guess. And I mean, look, it's, it's not, if, if you want to be a huge success in the movie business, obviously do it the traditional way with the studio behind you. Yeah, That's boring. Commercials, but this is this is a cool alternative for us. You know what I think about it is like, this is for like us and the hardcore fans. We don't want to bother anybody. Like sometimes, you know, when movies come out mainstream, you're inundated with ads and crap like that. And it's just like, ours is like, we don't want to bother anybody. We'll just mm. be over here with our <laughs> fans doing this thing. And it's been amazing. Like, it's like doing a rock concert. Right on, something. man. So we did that with Red State. Now we're hoping to do it with this as well. So far, so good. We start in Atlanta on Sunday, and then we go to uh, D.C., Terrytown, then we're back here in, in the city, and then wow. Philly and stuff. So we'll do this all year long. And with it being in profit already, then it's just like we yeah. go out there and it's... Gravy! You're, you're printing money at that <laughs> yeah. point. You've got an empire, Kevin Smith. It's little, though. Yeah. You've no, got an everyone empire. Says that. They're always like, you got an empire. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, it's more of a... It's, we, we, a blip pyre. It's not very big, but <laughs> we're what it is. It's cool. We were talking about you the other day. I wasn't sure if it was on the air. Sometimes I get that, I, I, you know, I don't know, whatever, because we talked the whole time. <laughs> but I can't believe how many podcasts you do a week. Yeah. About how many hours I, is I, that? I basically do the same amount of time as, or days. I don't even do time that you guys do, but I got five a week. You guys do five shows a week. Yeah. Same diff. It's not amazing. For radio people, you should be like, you're slacking. Right. <laughs> get, get more content. No, because every hour has to be different with you. That's what's amazing. Each show is different. But every if you listen to all your shows, like based on the content you get every day, the people come in or the news you're talking about, every episode's different. Well, now we joke because we're frustrated by all the podcasters because they do an hour a week, most of them. And walk we did away. Our, we did our first hour today. I go, yeah, that's our podcast this week. week. Yeah. See, yeah. see you next week. week. Nice. Know, but we don't true. have that luxury. Must be nice. And, and, do you guys podcast the show, though, when it's done? We're not allowed to. No, why would we? That would be, that would be embracing new media. That would be silly wait so there yes. so once yeah. the show ends see never... me biting my teeth it's so frustrating i'm like the, the, we have to hilarious. be in the itunes world do you understand it's, once it ends and we have you eight... don't that's it you like, get on no... demand but they have their on demand not... shit but i'm saying look we have eight years of material yeah that we can't even play all the eight years anymore because we're playing our newer shit so take the old shit give it put an hour on itunes every week so we're in the itunes world yes. with a little fucking commercial that you know these guys are doing you know fresh shows every day on Absolutely. Serious and it, and it drives everybody back to the Daily to Show as it's well. A, it's, a, it's a terrible lack of embracing the media. It's embarrassing. But it's a little strange. iTunes, and you make the charts and all that, that's that's big. Do you think it has everything to do with SiriusXM being like, hey, we got our thing going they're on lost. here. We don't want to. Yes, they're yeah. lost. Yeah. They're very hung up on exclusivity. But yeah. they're they lost. were. They seem to be back yeah. in the day, but oh, I don't think that are. matters anymore. No, it doesn't, but no, try but. to sell them on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you want to make it as inconvenient as possible for people to get it. Because you really want people to walk through a mile of shit to enjoy your product. <laughs> That's the best way to do it. We Why don't, make it easy? We don't have smart people around us. They, they don't have a vision. But the good news is you're getting paid. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the difference. Us podcasters, just, we may have some smart people around, but nobody has any money. <laughs> no, that's a good point. Advertisers still not really there? <laughs> not like it is here in radio. Like, you'll still get advertising, and, and there's definitely some great organizations that have discovered, like, hey, podcasts, mm. this is a, a dedicated uh, medium where the listeners will listen to the commercial. They're not going to walk away. They're not going to tune right. out. They're sitting there as part of it because you support the program, you right. support that which of supports course. the program. So it exists, and and you can make a you could cover your for, for us we cover lots of our uh, storage costs and whatnot. Uh, we move servers to kind of keep it cheaper as well because that's the thing. All oh, these yeah. podcasts free for everybody else, but for the person that hosts them, 
that costs money on a server. Sure, Every time yeah, people yeah. hit them, you're being charged. Like for the first two years, I was like, podcasts are free. And my <laughs> business manager was like, for everyone but you. Like, yeah, you need yeah, to yeah. pay for this crap. And I was like, oh shit. So, that's when we started monetizing, going out on the road with it. I was going to ask, sponsors. how do you make your money? It, I mean, for that, you for me, be... it was more about like, just I just want to cover the cost on, on the server. So I'm not paying for everyone to listen to this mm -hmm. stuff. But where I make my money, some people do the advertising thing. Like Adam Carolla, he does his podcast all the time. And his podcast is essentially his morning radio show he moved right. to podcast form so he kept the format with the commercials and ads and stuff i i don't mind the ads i'm happy to do it we do ads on our podcast but i didn't want to be beholden to like the advertising dollar not that i'm like i you know you fuck want to be held hostage well, yeah just i want a little more freedom and and also like if you're if you're dependent on advertising every waking moment of your life you're like do we have an ad for tomorrow uh -huh. so i didn't want to be that so i was like all right where do we make our money and how i figured or it's not even i figured it out but i figured okay all these podcasts drive people to the live show that's it. Right. So basically, for us, the podcast is an advertisement for the live show. And the live show, we make our coin. That's like, what I try to tell these people, because it's like it, it, sometimes you can't put your, your, your hands on where the money's coming from. It just will bring more people to our show eventually. It'll totally. all funnel down. And, and also, I'm, when. But they when have to see it immediately. When marketing understands, like when the advertisers understand, put it together, like, okay, yeah, TV is a wide net, but people don't sit there and watch commercials on TV. They kind of speed through them with a DVR. Um, radio, most people walk away during commercials, but podcasts, they will sit there and listen. You can put it at the beginning, middle, end, but they'll sit there and listen yeah, to it. And once they realize, like, you get three to 500,000 dedicated earballs that are like, oh, they're motivated and inclined to try out that product and stuff, th they'll understand that that's a, a medium that they want to be putting more money. It's, it's sick, easy <laughs> money yeah, for an happen. advertiser to be like, hey, man, we're hitting this many people, and it's guaranteed. Yeah. It's not like, I hope people are listening. Well, they can see exactly. It's almost like uh, YouTube clicks. They Bang. see in front of them the exact amount. of You can't yeah. lie about the numbers. Numbers never lie. But they can't yeah. change the way the, they do business either. You know, advertisers, they're having a tough time looking outside the box because they're used to a certain way as well. But right. if I we was spend an advertiser, our money this way. I would be I know, seizing you would think. this moment right now where think. I'm like, look, you've, for years I've been paying this much. And you could get in cheap. And knowing about results uh, about this. But now we could qualify and quantify our results mm -hmm. so i'd rather spend this much more effectively in different areas you know it's still tv's the big sexy where right. everyone's like you need a commercial yeah, yeah. but i and, and i'm not denying that of course commercials on tv without them there would be no television mm -hmm. programming but that's not the only place to spend your money and people forget about radio terrestrial is still huge like when i went on the red state tour i would ask people how many people are here because they saw me on TV promoting this? And you see a few hands go up. I'd be like, how many people uh, are here because they heard me on a radio show? And that would be like 85 to yep. 90%. Mm -hmm. People sit in their cars and go to work and listen to the radio. Like the way that for years and years people are like, ah, oh, radio is dead. Bullshit. Like mm -hmm. radio is a powerful yeah. media. That's why I keep trying to get into it. I'm like, that's the big sense. <laughs> we get a lot of celebrities that we hear, they just don't do radio. And I go, you're just, it's just dumb. dumb. You're just yeah. dumb. And we're not, dumb publicists. And we're not talking about the over the top A listers that just for some reason, feel they're above it we're talking about guys that absolutely could use the help on their project but they're no they don't do radio i don't i don't understand that dumb right it, it, yeah because there's no i mean there i've been in this business nearly 20 years now i've never heard anybody go like Ugh, radio you know like or yeah. in the real world but i've heard a lot of people like in actors Hollywood and stuff, stuff yeah who are just like well you know radio do i, I know. have to call Crazy. in blah 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 Look, let me uh, hit up uh, Tim in Michigan. He's got a question for Jason, who's also in studio. Jason Muse, what's up, Tim? Yeah, um, I was wondering about. I have a terrible um, opiate addiction myself, and um, I was wondering how he uh, maintains and got himself sober and managed to stay that way. I'll um, hang up and listen, but thank you guys. All right. Um, you know, I, I again the the podcast. What we're talking about now, for me personally, uh, the podcast has been a big help because this time around, uh, you know, me sharing my stories and keeping fresh in my head uh, things that I've done and where I don't want to go back to, like you know, Christmas time, setting my couch on fire and stuff. Uh, you <laughs> know, tradition. It's, it's just, like yeah. we were saying earlier, Yule log. Yeah. when we were saying earlier that it was almost five years. I, I think when I got my, uh, you know, when I got 
the surgery and got the painkillers, I was like, oh, I almost have five years, or in my head it was almost six years, and I'm fine, but I wasn't going to meetings, and I wasn't talking to people, and I wasn't really accountable to anyone. I was hanging out with a few people that were just normal, and they didn't understand. So, to, like, even my one buddy, I was like, hey, man, I just got surgery, and I ran out of my pain meds, and he's like, oh, I have a bottle, because <laughs> he didn't know any better, but now that I share with my friends and everyone around, I'm just straight up like, hey, you know, I, if they're like, hey, you want to go have a drink, you know, a glass of wine. I'm like, I can't. And they're like, what? It's not going to do anything. I'm like, Jesus. no, it will do any. It will do something. So I think just be honest with people and, and go to meetings and 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 find some people that uh, you feel like you can open up to to uh, share what's going on with you and to keep in, you know keep fresh even if it's a year, two years, three years down the road. Keep fresh. Like, hey man, things are good now or normal, but. You know, all it takes is one drink or one puff and stuff. Like weed to me, it's like I, I would. I wish I could smoke weed, but I can't mm. just because it's the mindset. But I'm not against weed at all. Like, uh, you know, to me, weed. Uh, is a, a good thing like hmm. my, i have a few i have a friend and my mom who passed now though uh it was the only thing that helped them eat so i actually think weed is good but i still can't do it myself because it's the mindset of like yeah yeah, yeah getting high yeah, yeah. yeah. It take so, me back I, like, I look at weed too like that was one i didn't have terrible memories associated with yeah but unfortunately i've used up all the good times and it's just it's just it's the price i'm paying for for having fucked at up 18. so much yeah, exactly yeah. jimmy's at like 26 18. 27 years in 26 yeah, yeah. yeah. 26 really? and change. Yeah, yeah, but it's the same thing. It's like, I, I can't 17. 17, he knew. So. I was at a meeting once where a dude was talking about, he's like, I got 26 years clean. And I was like, 26? And he seemed young. He started talking <laughs> about like he was doing coke at age 10 he lived out Jeez. in hollywood and, sh and shit like that so that he's like hollywood in the 80s man we'd come home from school cool and do coke and i was like <laughs> yeah. 10 years old but he knew at age 16 he's like i had a run and then by 16 i was like i don't want to do this anymore and you would imagine He's probably, he's probably lying about his age. He's in Hollywood. He was probably like, it was, everything was 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> he was probably 20, he was 26. Like, oh, it's actually 20. He's so. the producer in the room. He's like, I got sober when I was four. It's a fucking miracle. <laughs> I was like, this guy's young and smart. Uh, that was weird, though, hearing that, man. I was like, that's a long time clean. And to clean up, to be young, I mean, that. but you're young as well at, the, at that well, point. I, well, I don't, want to say my, I don't want to say his name, but our buddy, uh, my buddy, um, who I talk to all the time, he was like 14 when he, when he was on the street using... And had like lost all his teeth by like sixteen. Wow. Like, that's how bad. Uh, what was he doing? Was he doing meth? Hardcore or meth, uh, coke, heroin. He like, talked about everything. going to his first meeting, sitting yeah. in the back with his hand over his oh, mouth. Yeah, yeah. Like, no yeah. teeth. Yeah, yeah, like sixteen. He was like 16. homeless and like that bad. Fuck. Like he was really in bad shape. So yeah, it's it's pretty crazy when you hear people that young uh, getting into it but i mean it happens what do you do when you get the urge it's not weird hearing them get into it it's weird hearing that they get yeah. out of it like right. well, yeah, the presence well, of mind too, yes. at 16 or 17 to just know to be like to i'm full not going to do this anymore right, yeah because right. usually that kind of i put myself back to 17 i'm like i'm just I, I, if you were 17 16 you're like this feels good i'm never yeah, gonna yeah, stop yeah, Watch yeah, yeah. That. but I, I think it is pretty amazing i really do so when you get the urge you what do you, do you call I somebody immediately or do you i, I, I haven't honestly I haven't had an urge because i mean between uh talking about it like we're on the road all the time talking about it and my wife and and spending a lot of time with kevin and i, I mean i would say what i have an urge for more and it's not like an or like a serious urge is booze. Like mm. I almost to that fact to where I'm just like, man, why can't I just have a drink? How awesome would it be to be able oh, to go boy. to a ball game and have a couple cold ones? And uh, but the opiates. That's true. Luckily, Over the last few years, that's yeah. the only thing I've ever heard him talk yeah. about. Is like, you tempted anymore? He's like, everyone's wants to see a beer commercial. I want a beer. And I was like, why? Yeah, yeah. Like, it show looks like everyone's having a good time, and you know, I can't figure out why I can't do that. They're not accurate though. You, you never see a fucking Bud or Michelob Light commercial where you fast forward the guys being pulled out of a car with a fucking <laughs> a, a nine year old's leg in his grill. Like, <laughs> beer companies never show you fucking yeah. trying to keep an erection or for calling a woman or confessing a childhood homosexual incident to a room full of male friends. <laughs> I want to get a beer for Jimmy right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I want to but hear they, these stories. They do paint a lovely picture, though. <laughs> what was it? Yeah. You, you keep mentioning the surgery. What was the surgery? Oh, kidney stones. They put oh, a tube fuck. in there. Yeah. Oh, shit. They put a tube right in my... Oh, fuck. fuck. No fun, they man. couldn't do that Did ultrasonic they? shit? Yeah. I and they, and I remember were you they, awake when they were doing it? No, they put me out, but when I woke up, they gave me something, and I just remember, like, on the way home, like, feeling the side of my car, and my wife at the time had never seen me, 
messed up I oh, had. Oh, shit. You know, we were like, I had like two and a half years sober or so at that point. Um, but I started like rubbing the side of the car, I remember, and just being like, this is awesome. And she's like, oh my gosh, is this what you were like? Hi, you're so, <laughs> I don't want to be around your stuff. Oh, wow. <laughs> but yeah, but it's, uh, it was kidney stones. It was, it was pretty painful. But again, it, it was, it wasn't that painful looking back that I couldn't have just done the painkillers as prescribed for four or five, six days. I don't know. But it gave Dick me pain? that taste. Mm. Well, after like the huh. sixth day, I was like, man, it still hurts. And it was sort of my head tricking me. And I'm like, it says take two every, you know, four to six hours. But it's, you know, I have a high tolerance because I'm a, I have an old habit. Can you, and I even called the doctor because I'm like, if I don't take it as prescribed, it's going to be a relapse. So can you put three? Every four to six oh, hours, Jesus and he Christ. did change That's it for true. me. But and the two didn't really. It, that it, doesn't it took seem to really pain, figure. <laughs> but the three took it. Uh, took it to the that like warm feeling, and I was just like, whoa. Oh is, man. I don't know, but yeah. It, but again, hopefully, Damn. I'm not saying like, hey, I don't ever think like, oh, it's nice to get. Nice to just uh, zone out on some opiates, but <laughs> I think at this point again, I think it's so. I've messed up so many times and, and, and burned so many bridges. I, I don't think I, well, I know, I don't think physically I could come back from it. I don't think, huh. I think I'd lose everything I've got. And this time it's really in my face because I feel like even last time uh, when I, I lost some stuff, but I don't feel like I fell too far at that point. Kevin, well, were you no, ever so. in a position where you were ready to give up on him and just like, hey, fuck did you this? Get, yeah, like, did you get Had that? it? <laughs> yeah, there were really? a few times. Yeah. I yeah. mean, the last time, honestly, like, I thought he was clean for six years, and then it outed that he was only clean for five, and he'd been using for, like, the last year of it. And jo his wife, Jordan, told me. And he's right. Like, when he hooked up with her, he was clean. So she never saw, like, Junky Muse. Oh, and yeah. she was scared. She was like, I don't know how to say this, but I think Jason's using it. I was like, no, no. Oh, it was during Cop Out. And he was out here. He'd come out here at one point because... He wanted to be a stunt driver in it. He was like, can I be in the movie? And I was like, I don't think there are any parts. He goes, no, I want to be a stunt man. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah, I see there's a car flip. I want to do that. Holy and so shit. I asked Warner Brothers. They were like, I guess if he wants to be, we'll send him to stunt school. So they're going to send him to stunt school to learn to drive. It was like 10 grand or something. How neat him. That's kind of cool. <laughs> he would have yeah, needed yeah. that. I know. Oh. Yeah. You were just hoping to get hurt and get painkillers. That's all right. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, I'm going to roll car. Yeah. I'm going to get no monoxies. <laughs> um, but he, uh, when she told me about it, she was like, like he's using and we and I there, there was a really sad moment that actually mm. like years later is kind of uh, bittersweet and poetic but I called him like when she told me I was like well we got to get him here we got to intervene we'll get our friend DK over and he'll take him right to a rehab like that's the only way there's no messing around right. you can't let him try to do it I've been down this road so I called him up I was like hey man what's up and he's like hey how are you and I was like why don't you come over and we'll grab some breakfast he was like yeah and I was like yeah and he's like okay and years later, or like later, he, he would the talk. bear trap in the front door. Yeah. And he said he knew it, too. He was just like, I oh, knew yeah. something was wrong because you never invite me to breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and years, but, I mean, years later, that's what we do. We eat breakfast together. We spend a lot of time together now. But yeah. at that point, he was like, oh, there's something wrong here. And he got there, and I was like, it's we like all know. It's like calling up the guy to yeah. get whacked. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Come on down. I, yeah. got, I got something I need you to do. Uh, Jason put his pinky made. ring in the fucking thing. I appreciate your honesty about it, and I do listen to your podcast when i can and uh, i love when you're telling your stories when you're all fucked up holy yeah. there was one i'm trying to remember where you were being chased or something and ended up on a, a movie set do you remember something like that and you ended up being an extra in a movie you didn't oh, want yes, to be yes, in yes, because you were like <laughs> trying to get rid of some dude yeah huh. my butt yeah my butt i borrowed my buddy's car and i was going to cop and i we were at a red light and i dropped my butt my cigarettes and i reached down but my foot must have came off the brake just a little bit and i swear oh, my I car hit right. it this yeah boom that uh, barely, and anyway, hit, the barely guys, tapped it yeah and the guy's like we're gonna call the cops and they're gonna be here and i'm oh, like shit. oh i don't have a license and i have a warrant and then i'm like all right let me pull over and he jumped through the window because he's like you're gonna take off and i'm like no i'm just pulling out of the main road because people are beeping and stuff <laughs> yeah. and he grabbed the keys from me so now i'm like there's no way i can even try to sneak out so i got out of the car and we're talking i'm like all right i'm waiting for the cops he like turned around and walked back to his car for a second i was like Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, shit it off. And I'm like going oh, down these side good. streets and then i saw a dude that had worked on one of the movies and he's like hey man what's up dude he's like i worked on such and such and he's like 
I'm I'm an you know a PA for this movie and, and I'm like and I'm like all right I can dip in here and and stay away but then I was in the backyard and they're like oh you're here and while you're here yeah it was and they put I, you on camera and, they're yeah, like, they why here yeah, exactly they yeah, kind of put them on camera or yeah. you're like in the <laughs> background of a scene and then it, it somehow yeah and then somehow, we'll give you sanctuary but you gotta <laughs> yeah, ask yeah. for a coke in I the scene I didn't tell them why I was running and that I was running for this situation I was like oh man and you know what my car broke down and I have to go pay this this guy I owe money and I was like you know what I was like can you give me a ride down there to pay him <laughs> off so he even wind up giving me the guy after I shot a couple things and left he gave me a ride to the Burger King where I was to meet my guy and I pay, I like got out and went over and gave the dude money. I was like, yeah, I just paid him off the money I owed him, but I was really picking up. And wow. then I was like, I'll be right back. I'm going to the bathroom. You know, it was that was at the point where I, I couldn't wait to get in the car and get home. I'd like go in the Burger King bathroom and like shoot crack. And wow, it was just ridiculous. Shoot crack? So, yeah. How do you shoot crack? I think you smoke lemon crack. juice. Oh wait, no, water. No, I'm just kidding. Well, <laughs> no, yeah. well I don't want to give away. Yeah. Like I. Not a lot of people know that, but yeah, you can anyway. It's, yeah, there's ways to do it, and and it's better if you like that stuff. Anyway, it's oh, bad. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's bad. bad. It's bad just and crazy, bad. and, and it's just yeah. bad shit. It got worse and worse, and it was bad. So, but yeah, Jay, wow, you couldn't even go super home. Groovy yeah, cartoon movie is right. awesome. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Jay. Not at all. Right. The, right. the podcast. I mean, the only reason Jay and Silent Bob Super Groovy cartoon movie exists is because of shit like this. Like when For we sure. started doing. Jay and Silent Bob Get Old, which is the podcast we do. It's kind of the intervention podcast. He sits around every week and talks about, you know, he tells funny stories about fucking, and then he tells horrible stories about being <laughs> fucked up. And, right. And, you know, we don't sit there and lecture. Our philosophy is like, handle your high. we got nothing wrong with, like, fucking booze or drugs. Obviously, I'm a fucking big fat stoner. <laughs> but when it comes to, you know, your substances, life is hard. If you can't handle your high, put it the fuck down. Mm. In the case of Jason, he's just one of those people who can't handle his fucking high. So we went out. We've been doing the podcast for now. What's going on? Two years, like 103. Mm episodes or whatever always a live show and it's nice because i sit next to him and every time like i've watched him become a really wonderful raconteur he can tell stories like in the beginning you'd have to pull the stories out of him now you give him 20 minutes and he just holds forth and, and you're the more reactionary guy than mm. anything else but during all that i think the first two months after doing it that's when he was just like i want to do something else like the pot can we do you want to do the podcast every day mm. and i was like well if we did a radio show i guess we could do it every day but podcast every day i don't know and that's when he was just like well i want to do something else and it led to the movie so the movie he was kind of doing to stay sober and mm -hmm. it, it kind of worked out you know yeah, turned right into on. something i think it's gonna be great i can't wait to see it it's funny shit dude it's like i've, I've been i've been in a nice position of not having to like work on it they go off and do the work and then they're like what do you think so i'm just the the opinion guy right and i can be like well you can lose this because you don't need this or you can add this or we can record a new line but generally speaking it's been such a gift because like i'm doing a, a bunch of other shit and then periodically you get an email with a file in it and you're just watching this cartoon flick so it slowly came together over the course of about a year and a half and now we're ready to take it out and it's fucking funny it's total stoner comedy nice. it's good fucking i look forward to this is the, the weird thing about this is every other flick we've ever taken out even red state i've seen it with a bunch of people by the time we bring it to an audience but this was so isolated and insular we haven't even screened it for him. nobody's seen it except me him and and his lady and the, and the guy that mixed it and people that did some songs and stuff well, i'm going tuesday next it's, tuesday it's, you're get the tuesday website out again too it is uh it is c's of uh, csmod.com slash groovy movie um, there's a lot of dates up. You can go because there's, there's too many to give out. But there's like there's like 20 different cities or, or dates, and uh, of course it's at that Kevin Smith on. Uh, and well, who are you on Twitter, Jason? Are you on Twitter? At J uh, J A Y M E W E S at J Muse. Yeah. Okay. And we uh, that's that's out in the world. That requires you to leave your house to go see us. Uh, you'll be able to hear the podcast for free later on. It's modcast. But if you want to go see these live, events, but if you, you want to go, yeah, you got to yeah. leave the house. However. We also have a cartoon that if you don't want to leave the house, you can actually watch right now. We just put it up on iTunes yesterday. It's called Kevin Smith's Cartoon Lagoon. <laughs> and me and him are on a... So the story is 70s sounding yeah. cartoon yeah. titles. It's, it's so funny. 70s, dude. It's, it's very... So it's, it's Space Ghost Coast to Coast yeah, with a little yeah. bit of Pee Wee's Playhouse with and a little bit of... Sid and Marty Croft. Uh, we have a yeah. puppet, dude. Do you? A All puppet right, that we right interact with. And yeah. it, we're in a cartoon <laughs> sub that got lost oh, going to Poughkeepsie. And we're being chased by a... A great white shark that Ralph yeah. Garman does a voice for, and then we show cartoons. It's it's fun. Oh, you want to talk about that's great stoner activity though? Like I watched it 
at when it was all finished, and I was like, this wouldn't exist if I didn't smoke weed. Right. Okay. The only reason it exists is because you're like, <laughs> let's do a puppet show, you know? <laughs> and we wound up doing it, and it was a lot of fun. So we're going to try to do it. We have all these cartoons that, that Stark and other people have made off of our, our podcast. So we're like, well, let's put them in a framework. And mm. the framework is us trapped on this sub uh, fighting this great white shark who comes up to the toilet and the only way like we could fight him off is with cartoons so we just keep showing them nice cartoons. <laughs> so they can go get that now kevin smith's cartoon lagoon on itunes i gotta ask you, you gotta, one more thing we oh. gotta bring tom in oh, tom, tom, yeah, 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 i gotta ask you one more thing though uh because obviously you're, you're aficionado as far as uh, uh comic movies go uh superman what are you thinking oh uh, you trailer. i cried at that trailer the trailer is fucking uh, great. When, when when kevin Costner goes you are my son like and he has that crack in his voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that that really got to me when whenever they're doing the voiceover about like he'll be this, he'll be this. Uh -huh. It's messianic. They're talking about a Christ-like figure yeah, about like yeah. you're going to go to Earth and be this for these people. Um, it looks big. Like the opening yeah. shot of the trailer with all that chaos, Huge. is Krypton is exploding, and it's just single piano cues as opposed to like it's it everything about it screams like you know all these beats, and but we're presenting. And, Zod. Zod. and there's a moment in the trailer that looks like they're doing a version of the of the Kryptonian prisoner sent sentencing. Yes, yeah, yeah. he's sitting there going, I will find him. And yeah. he's kind of looking in cuffs and he's not on, on Earth. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it yeah, looks yeah. like they're going to start kind of the same way. <laughs> I got excited. Dude. I got totally excited. And it's I saw Snyder's. your tweet. It's just like, oh. kneel before Zod. I'm like, oh, fuck, the trailer's out. Do you think I he says it? it? Out. Do you think they'll say it? I don't know. He's got it's it. Such a, it. Such a fucking cool I hope line. to God. It it's, looks fantastic. It looks I great. love that dude. I used to watch the Tudors, and he was always like a really good dude in the Tudors. Like one of the one, one mm. of the few characters in the Tudors with a moral compass. Yeah. Some sort. Um, he looks like he's he's doing the job. And Russell fucking Crowe? Perfect That's, casting. Yes. Yeah, like all the gravitas that he brings to yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, I just cannot wait. It psyched. looks phenomenal. The, the air strikes. Did you see him punching people in the air? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you played? I know this is a little close to home, too, and we'll get out of here. No, 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 no. There's a game that we did a commercial for called The Injustice, Injustice Gods Among Us. It's a fighting game by the guys that do Mortal Kombat. And it's all DC Universe characters fighting each other. Yeah. This game, dude, we've lost so much fucking time and productivity. <laughs> <laughs> because you could just be yeah. Batman beating the shit out of Batman, or you could be Batman <laughs> beating the shit out of Bane, Superman, Batman fighting. It's so fucking badass. But when you, they have a special move. Every character is a special right. move. And the Superman special move is like, you know, you do the fucking combo button. They zoom in on him and like, get ready for the special move. Superman punches you. You go up through the ceiling, up into the upper atmosphere. You break clouds. <laughs> You're in outer space. He zips past you, then comes above you and punches you back <laughs> fucking down to earth. It is so cool. As much as I love Man of Steel, man, this, this game... Yeah. Is is it's it feels like you're actually in charge. They have it for your it's iPad dope. and your iPhone too. It's, yeah. It doesn't have all those specials, but right. it's it's really the it's fighting game, is awesome. Man. It's not it's a shooter game, but it's a fighter right. game. But it's about right. the people that did more combat, cool. like Ed Boon and stuff. So it's a pretty bad, like get over here kind of badass. Fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Anyway, well, we're listen, I, I got a piss. You, you can stay. You can stay. We actually it, get more than It's really up to you. We I just, know we got some stuff to do. I don't want to take one man's guy. <laughs> okay. Uh, give him the but I don't want you to think serious. we're, you know. No, no never. You're God, more than welcome. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, guys. Hey, Jason, thanks Jason so Hughes, much, Jason Kevin man. Smith, of course. Cool. Jane Silent Bob's super groovy cartoon movie. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to the I'm going We got tickets for you. We'll put aside. Where's the Best Buy Theater, by the way? It's right in Times Square, I think. It's easy. Two blocks away. We'll find it. Yeah, we'll figure it out.